Hi, I'm Dr. Patrick O'Shaughnessy. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of CHS Presents, Dr. O, Faithfully Transforming Healthcare. Today, we're going to discuss CHS's St. Francis Heart Center at Mercy Medical Center. Catholic Health Services is an integrated healthcare delivery system with some of the region's finest health and human services agencies. Under the sponsorship of the Diocese of Rockville Center, CHS serves hundreds of thousands of Long Islanders each year, providing care that extends from the beginning of life to helping people live their final years in comfort, grace, and dignity. CHS is focused on quality, and through this show and many community health initiatives, we promote good health, providing you access to the care you need. St. Francis Heart Center Cardiovascular Program will launch new interventional services at Mercy Medical Center beginning in December of 2020. St. Francis Heart Center at Mercy Hospital will also enhance the existing diagnostic catheterization program offering immediate cardiac care to patients. We met up with Dr. Richard Schlafmitz, Chairman of Cardiology at CHS's St. Francis Hospital. Dr. Schlafmitz, thank you so much for joining us today. We're actually here at St. Francis in one of your cath labs and you've been an incredible leader helping us extend the vision and the brand of St. Francis uh, across multiple institutions within CHS, and you've been leading the build out and now the go live of our new cath lab at Mercy Medical Center. Can you share a little bit about how you've been able to take St. Francis quality and bring it to that location? Well, thank you for coming over to St. Francis today, but you know, one thing we're proud of at CHS is that we have great doctors and nurses across all six hospitals that we're fortunate enough to work with. Yes. And St. Francis, you know, on Long Island and in the tri-state area, is sort of like the Coca-Cola for heart disease. When you think of a heart problem, you think of St. Francis, at least I think most people do. Yes. And we've been very fortunate in that we've got involved in the highest levels of technology and equipment. We're leaders in the world in research, interventional imaging, physiology, structural heart disease. So we have tremendous amount of people working with us and we've been very fortunate to lead the way in these areas. Yes. And it's been the administrative and the physician's goals across the system to bring that quality, not just at St. Francis, but at our sister institutions. We've been fortunate that Good Sam has a wonderful open heart program. They're getting now involved in clinical research and imaging yes. and physiology. But we've recently had the opportunity to open up a cath lab at Mercy Hospital. Yes. And that's a community that's a very, very great community. Yes that we want to be able to bring the same level of care that St. Francis offers here in Roslyn to the community in Rockville Center so they can get immediate care in the most critical situations. And it's so important, right? Because you know better than anybody, time is muscle. Time so is muscle. while we've done great with transferring patients to St. Francis, you wanted to bring that same quality both on the physician side and the technology side to the community of Rockville Center and Mercy Medical Center. And hit it right on the head. Time is muscle. And what he means by that, what you mean by that, is that the quicker you get a blocked artery open, the more muscle you save and the better the patient does. So when someone comes in with a heart attack, whether it's Saturday at 2 in the morning right. or Monday afternoon at 3 o'clock, we are equipped at Mercy Hospital, like we are at St. Francis, that we have a quality team, quality equipment and staff to give the best care as quickly as possible. Now, what we historically have done to have an ambulance parked out there ready to go and bring right. it to us and that right. works great and we do a great right. job right. but we're always trying to do better so number one in terms of structure we built a mirror lab in Mercy Hospital the same as the most perfect lab that we have in St. Francis equal at Mercy same thing there exact equipment I wouldn't even know which room I'm in number right. one 
we have our staff here that's been working with the staff at Mercy, and we're going to be working along with them, with my same staff. In addition, all 20 interventional cardiologists at here at St. Francis are going to be rotating at Mercy. It's incredible. So when you have your procedure at Mercy, the equipment's the same, the doctors are the same, and the staff is the same. The only difference is we're going to take care of you point of service there that moment. In the community, supporting, in the community. And supporting the community. It's really incredible stuff, and this has been a, a vision, and you and I share this, Dr. Garcia shares it, and we're so excited to kick this off. So you mentioned a lot about the high quality St. Francis team, physician team that's at Mercy Medical Center. You also mentioned it's the same high quality equipment and technology, but expand a little bit and give maybe an example, uh, Dr. Schlafmans, of the technology that you guys employ to deliver the best outcomes. Well, let me explain it on, a, on a, maybe a general basis to make an analogy. Right. Make believe you and your wife want to build your kitchen up and you say, hon, I'd like to get those cabinets there. Why don't we call the guy over from the construction company and have him bring around 50 different cabinets and he could try to place each one in to find out which one fits. Right. You wouldn't even think of doing that. Right. What you're going to do is have someone measure exactly so he brings one cabinet that fits in perfectly. Well, as hard as it is to believe, 97% of the people who have angiograms in the world, when they do an angiogram, the two doctors look up at the screen and right. they say, what do you think? Right. And you just go, well, I think it's around 95% block. What do you think the blockage is made of? I don't know. It's a blockage. How long is the blockage? How big is the stent? I think it's around this. Well, at St. Francis, we've employed this technology for the last eight years called optical coherence tomography. It's right. a game changer. Yeah. Right now, 3% of the world is using it, but I project in the next year that number is going to astronomically take off. We've been educating people from around the world with teleconferences, going to the labs, having people come here. It's amazing. And what this technology is, I actually put a camera inside the artery. So I am three-dimensionally looking at the artery. I can tell you the type of plaque. Is it calcium? Is it lipid? Is it fibrotic? So I know how to pre-treat the vessel properly. I could tell you to the millimeter the length of stent that's necessary to land it in normal tissue right. and the exact size. And when I'm done, I could tell you if I have a perfect result. This technology gives us precision angioplasty. Right. lets us do an angioplasty without mystery. Right. It's revolutionary. And here at St. Francis, we're the world's leader in that technology. And we're going to be doing that exact technology at Mercy Medical Center. It's fantastic. And you termed, you know, really coined the term precision angioplasty, which is a game changer. I agree with you 100%. I think this thing is already taking off. You and your team are leading this globally. And we're just so fortunate to have you really bring this technology to CHS and take it through the whole cardiovascular service line. Let's talk a little bit about community impact. You know, you, you have such an amazing impact on the community and, and CHS and St. Francis, its commitment to the communities. And you mentioned this before, Cath Lab at Mercy is just one example of the work that you do to help bring uh, the highest quality service to a community that, that really needs it. Well, St. Francis, I've been here since 1987. And what always fast, was amazing about St. Francis is that it's not just a building walls it's people yes it's a family yes whether the person who's guiding you from the lobby to where you're going to go visit your family member whether you're going for an x-ray and someone's transporting you or the person who's bringing you your tuna fish sandwich the doctors the nurses when you're a patient at st francis you never want to be a patient anywhere else That's true because we're a family right and what we've been very fortunate our administration has said you know what that's important here we want that same experience everywhere, right. and that's our goal, right. to make the experience for people who live in that community that they could stay in that community, especially in these trying times. You may want to be close to home. We're going to offer you point-of-service care that's where right. you are. That's right. Well, it's really impressive, and I, I can't thank you enough for your leadership, for your passion, and your commitment to really improving the care for so many thousands of Long Islanders. Rich, it's truly an honor and privilege. I want to thank you for taking the time to speak with us Always today. Always good to see you. Thank you, Dr. Schlafmitz. We need to take a break. Please stay tuned. Once there was a boy who did the same thing again and again. One day he was told he had autism. He got help and slowly learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Welcome back to CHS Presents Dr. O, Faithfully Transforming Healthcare. We also met up with Dr. Gary H. Friedman, co-director for CHS's Mercy Medical Center PCI program. Take a look. 
So, Dr. Friedman, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Now, you know, we were talking a little bit off camera about how your specialty has changed over the years. And uh, you mentioned a lot, uh, again, relating to not just technology, but specifically within technology, imaging being vitally important. Maybe you could share a little bit about what that means, you know, doing an intervention today, especially with the technology at all of the Catholic health sites under the leadership of the service line, uh, as opposed to years ago. Right, so it's a great uh, question, and it's really amazing how far we have come right. in such a short amount of time. Uh, when I started, we used regular film, where you had to use a, uh, a viewer to look at, a, at, at an angiogram. I can recall when we did angiograms, we had someone else in the periphery using a Vanguard machine to make the film go forward, backwards, and we, you could see what you were doing. Now, we then we entered into the digital arena so that you could really see coronary arteries displayed in front of you. You had replayability right away at your fingertips. And we thought, wow, this is like the paradigm now right. of imaging coronary right. arteries. You sure. can see everything. Yep. But now, the world has really been opened. And now we're doing all sorts of imaging, uh, OCT, IVIS, high resolution IVIS. We do now physiology in the coronary arteries with special kinds of Doppler flow wires. It's going to be that the routine angiogram is going to be a thing of the past possibly, right. where you take one picture, that's it, and the rest will be all this intravascular imaging, which opens up a whole new arena and a whole new way of looking at the arteries. We're actually seeing them from inside the well, artery. That's really amazing. So when you think about it for folks at home, it's like the old days of the old uh, Kodak pictures versus digital precision pictures inside the lumen, inside the vessel. So right. like if your artery is a straw, you're actually seeing the inside walls of the straw, seeing the disease type and the extent of it. Correct. And it's, it's not amazing. Only, yeah, and it's not only inside the artery, but these devices see the wall itself. You know, the wall has a thickness. If you right. th imagine a garden hose, you look at the yes. garden, it's got a thickness. So the artery has a thickness too. And many things hide in that, in yes. that, in that artery, in the yes. thickness. Calcium is our worst enemy. Yes. But we see calcium so well defined now in these vessels. And it tells us how to direct our treatment plan. Do we do just a regular balloon? Do we do something using a, a, a cutting balloon? Do we use an atherectomy device, which is like a weed whacker sometimes right. that goes to into the artery to shave, to shave, shave it? it. Right. So we do a lot of vessel modification, lesion modification now, before we even think about putting a stent in, for example. We want to be sure, is that artery going to expand well so that we can put our stent in and get the desired result? Oh, it's incredible. I think you explained it perfectly well. Uh, so that technology and that skill, the physical operator skill, is what we'll have at Mercy Medical Center. Absolutely. And, you know, we feel it's been years where the patients have been coming here, right? Yes. So we feel it's our job to bring our technology and expertise to the patients. And that's where they live. They live in Rockville Center, around Mercy. It's the five towns. It's uh, that whole region, yes. which is not really benefiting from this. Right. So we feel very strongly that we're going to be able to bring that technology there so that they don't have to travel. It's amazing. And we're so blessed to have you and the setup now that we have at, at Mercy Medical Center. I would be remiss if I didn't ask one point because so many folks at home uh, would love to know a tidbit, a pearl from an esteemed cardiologist such as yourself. What can they do to keep themselves cardiovascularly healthy and to try to avoid perhaps needing your services on the interventional side? Well, that's a, it's a great question, and the, we're trying to disseminate that kind of knowledge uh, every day to our patients that we see in our offices. It's all lifestyle. Yes. It's all dieting properly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it's all exercising yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, all the bad habits of smoking and everything. It's all true. Yeah. So, you know, those are the things that we have to do to stay uh, healthy and yeah. uh, heart smart yes. and uh, try to avoid these problems to begin with. Right. You're right. Uh, so and we're being much more aggressive with cholesterol lowering, for example. We have all new technologies, even in the pharmacological arena. We have uh, some new, new drugs, new drugs, injectable drugs that we're using. And there may be some that will be one injection for for a year, for example, that may be enough to keep your cholesterol levels down. So important. And, yeah. So important. Well, I can't thank you enough for taking the time out of a busy office day to come speak with us. We're really excited and feel blessed to have you help us lead Mercy Medical Center's cath lab. I want to thank you for your leadership and your clinical expertise. Thank My you, pleasure. Dr. Friedman. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for having me.
We also met up with Dr. Siddharth Yadav, co-director, Mercy Medical Center, PCI program. So Dr. Yadav, tell us a little bit about why the new cardiac cath lab and PCI capabilities are so important for the residents here along the south shore of Nassau County here at Mercy Medical Center. Uh, yeah, well, there are a couple of major reasons. Um, first of all, uh, it will allow the residents of the South Shore um, uh, to be able to access uh, life-saving medical procedures in, in an emergency, um, specifically acute myocardial infarction or heart attacks. Uh, as you know, time is of the essence. Right. As you always say, time is muscle, right? We right. talked about time it. Time so. is muscle, exactly. So um, prior to our PCI program, patients would have to, uh, it, the patients that would come into our emergency room with uh, uh, an acute MI uh, would have to be transferred to a local hospital for PCI uh, services. You know, opening up the occluded artery uh, in a timely fashion is the utmost importance. Um, now with PCI capabilities, uh, we would be able to perform those services uh, right here uh, at the same hospital thereby reducing the amount of time uh, delay uh, for the patient to receive the uh, appropriate care. That's great. And, and, and again, this is a, a St. Francis-sponsored program. I think it's important for the viewers to know, even though you're a seasoned, experienced interventional cardiologist, you, as a, you and your team actually spent additional time training at St. Francis. So it's the whole team approach and also learning some of the newer imaging techniques like OCT. Right. I've been uh, at, at St. Francis uh, for a number of years now, since 2013, uh, uh, doing procedures there. And um, uh, I've incorporated imaging into my procedures as well. Uh, under the leadership of Dr. Slothmitz, uh, we, uh, we do use, uh, we have a heavy utilization of imaging uh, uh, with OCT and IVIS. And that's been uh, shown to um, improve outcomes angiographically and clinically. Um, and I've seen that with, with my results uh, uh, in the patients that I perform these procedures on. So um, we, working at St. Francis, our staff training at St. Francis um, has allowed us to uh, acquire those skills and, and, and bring those skills here, uh, which will be available to the residents of the South Shore. It's, a, it's remarkable. It's really great that we're being able to do this here. And I think it's important to know that, you know, your team and, and that team is interconnected. So. There's always this, it's, it's, it's really one program, right? I mean, yeah. it's just a different location. Exactly. Um, St. Francis, uh, I, I've worked in a number of hospitals. Uh, I've done procedures in a number of hospitals, and I think St. Francis has probably the best nursing care out of all of them. Yes. And uh, we will have access to those nurses. Uh, right, the, here at Mercy. Here at Mercy, exactly. So. Uh, the nurses uh, will be rotating down at Mercy for, uh, uh, for coverage, and our nurses are participating in their call schedule as well at St. Francis. So it's really uh, uh, a mixture of, uh, of both staffs, and uh, um, that definitely brings that uh, St. Francis experience uh, here at Mercy. That's great. And, you know, I, I, I do want to pivot a little bit because I, I think this is, this is pretty, uh, pretty cool. Um, in a sense, you're coming home, right? I mean, you grew up here, and, and here you are back now leading a program at one of the CHS hospitals. Tell our viewers a little bit about your background and, and, and now that you're a member of our team here. Yeah, uh, I was, uh, well, I was born and raised on Long Island, and uh, um, I went to medical school here, uh, and I did my residency in Manhattan and uh, 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 my training program in, in Philadelphia. And I came back to New York uh, to work. I uh, wanted to be back home. And um, I did work in the city for a couple of years. And then I decided to venture out on my own and start a practice here on Long Island, locally in Hempstead. And, uh, and Mercy is where I started. Uh, I started my practice uh, uh, you know, being available for uh, uh, the hospitalized patients and uh, seeing these patients on consultation. and. Uh, uh, basically uh, growing a practice uh, on my own here uh, at, at Mercy. And when the opportunity came up to uh, uh, grow um, uh, professionally uh, and grow the uh, PCI program here at Mercy, I, I jumped at that opportunity. I thought it was a, 
a great uh, opportunity for me um, and uh, a great opportunity for the hospital to uh, make a mark uh, on the South Shore. Yeah, really well said. And we feel so blessed to have you uh, lead the program here uh, along with Dr. Friedman. I think we've got great leadership. We have great oversight with St. Francis, great technically, incredibly well-trained operators, but also that nursing wraparound, great technology. It means, to your point, really, truly the best outcomes for patients in the Rockville Center area. So thank right. you so much, Dr. Yadav, for your work and for your leadership. Thank you. We'll be right back after this short break. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But I get it, you're busy, and busy people can't have prediabetes. Oh, I read that wrong. They can, okay. Just go to the site. When I lost my sight, the only thing I had was reading. The National Library Service for the Blind and Physically Handicapped Library of Congress gives patrons the freedom to read their way. Call 1-888-NLS-READ. Thanks to all my guests today, and now for my final thoughts on today's discussion. You know, as an emergency room physician, I used to see patients all the time that would come in with symptoms of a heart attack. And having on-site capabilities for immediate percutaneous coronary intervention is incredibly important to ensure the best outcome of care. As you've heard many times in this show, time is muscle, and that muscle is your heart. So it's vitally important that you go to a center or you tell your EMS provider if you're experiencing symptoms of chest pain, come to a St. Francis Heart Center program at any CHS location. Now for advice on how to triage your life. My health tip and solution for today focuses on leukemia. My goal is to bring you information that will help you live a healthier life. You know, with so many experts, it's hard to determine what's factual and what's not. I'd like to share with you the truth in medicine with no spin, no marketing, just a simple truth, as well as some trusted sites for information you can reference right from your home. The one source of truth I'd like to share comes from the Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center and can be found at www.roswellpark.org. Roswell Park and CHS have a new strategic clinical research partnership which affords CHS cancer patients access to many new cutting edge clinical trials. Leukemia is another name for blood cancer and occurs when several types of cancer begin in the tissues that create blood cells. It's known as our blood marrow. When you develop leukemia, your bone marrow begins to make abnormal white blood cells. And your white blood cells are the cells that fight infection for you. These then are called leukemia cells. Unlike normal blood cells, leukemia cells don't die when they should. They may actually crowd out normal white cells red blood cells, which are the cells that carry oxygen through your body, and platelets, which are the cells to help your blood clot after you have a cut or an injury. This makes it hard for these normal blood cells to do their work, and that's when symptoms develop. The leukemia symptoms you experience will be affected by how many leukemia cells there are in your body and how many cells have collected throughout your tissues. Some of the symptoms may include shortness of breath when walking uh, or at rest, swollen lymph nodes. They usually don't hurt, especially lymph nodes in the neck or in the armpits. Fevers, especially night fevers and night sweats. Frequent infections or poor healing of minor cuts and then easy bleeding, like you may have easily bleeding gums or purplish patches in the skin or even tiny red spots that you can see under your skin. These are all warning signs, and they are triggers for you to see your physician. There are several methods used to diagnose leukemia. For example, your doctor can diagnose leukemia through a physical exam by checking for the things I just spoke about, swollen lymph nodes, skin lesions or lumps, and most importantly, by taking a simple blood test. 
that blood test can detect the number of white blood cells you have, uh, leukemia cases, which is a very, very high level of these white blood cells. And then if that does come back abnormal, they do a small non-invasive procedure called a bone marrow biopsy, which can confirm that leukemia cells are present in the bone marrow. And a chest x-ray many times can show swollen lymph nodes or other signs of disease in your chest. If you've been diagnosed with leukemia, your treatment options will depend on your age, the type of leukemia you have, which could either be acute, which means occurring right away, or chronic, you may have had it for some period of time. Specific characteristics of your cancer cells and whether leukemia cells are found in your cerebral spinal fluid, which is the fluid that actually surrounds your brain and your spine, or if these same cells are found in other areas of your body. Make an appointment with your doctor if you have any of the persistent signs and symptoms that I described earlier because time is critical. You have to get seen and get diagnosed early. Leukemia symptoms can be vague and not specific and as such could be missed if you don't seek regular proactive visits with your primary care provider. These are things like an annual wellness visit. You may overlook early leukemia symptoms because they re resemble symptoms of the flu or other common illnesses, so you may not think you have anything bad. Always get checked out. If something's not going away or something's not right, bring it to your physician's attention. As with all cancers, both solid tumor types as well as blood-based cancers like leukemia, early detection offers the best chance of cure. Don't let symptoms go for long periods of time without getting evaluated by your physician. I hope you'll find this material beneficial, and as always, I wish you a happier, healthier life. For more health information, tune in to CHS Presents, Dr. O, Faithfully Transforming Healthcare, airing on the Catholic Faith Network and CBS TV 55. To view recent episodes, you can go to cfntv.org or CHS's YouTube channel, where you can also watch Dr. O's health tips and solutions. If you need a physician, please do visit www.chsli.org or you can call 1-855-CHS-4500. If you'd like to know more about St. Francis Heart at Mercy Medical Center and what they have to offer to make a special gift in support of this or another program that is important to you, please visit chsli.org. Thank you for watching today. If you have any medically related questions you'd like me to answer on future shows, just drop us an email at dro at chsli.org. I'm Dr. Patrick O'Shaughnessy, and I hope to see you next time on CHS Presents, Dr. O, Faithfully Transforming Healthcare. Mm -hmm.